This is a story about heroes and friendship, and the new ties linking once bitter enemies. It's an incredible, unique story because veterans who fought in Vietnam or were connected to the wars in Vietnam were now building something very unique and very uh, positive, life-affirming, to help heal the worst victims of the war, namely the children who had Agent Orange damage. Friendship Village, American veterans and Vietnamese uh, veterans together. And uh, that's a good idea. Shaped like an elongated S, Vietnam stretches for a thousand miles along the length of the Indochinese Peninsula and covers an area roughly the size of New Mexico. China lies to the north, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia to the west, and the South China Sea to the east. This is Hanoi City, the People's Republic of Vietnam. The capital of North Vietnam and once the stronghold of a people we called the enemy. From Kennedy to Nixon and from Tet to the Round Table, now almost 30 years later, a great deal has changed. Today, it looks as though there never was a war. No napalm, no arc light, no DMZ. For the new generation of Vietnamese, the war with America is ancient history. Half the population was born after it ended. There are some signs of the war that happened here but these relics are little more than a passing curiosity. Here in the Hanoi market, life goes on very much as it always has. The same foods are being bartered, the same language spoken, and the only difference between now and then is the age of the war veterans. Spiritual life is evident throughout Vietnamese society and culture. Buddhism, Confucianism, and Christianity are among the many faiths practiced here. The children here are just like children everywhere else in the world. They play in the streets, pile onto each other's bicycles, and generally act as if the world was designed for their pleasure. But not all of the children of Hanoi live in happiness. When you leave downtown, the sounds of laughing children fade quickly. Here, almost lost from world view, is the Vietnam Friendship Village Project. At first glance, this appears to be an ordinary boarding school. But when you look closer, it's clear that these are not ordinary kids. These children suffer the legacy of a war they know nothing about. Evidence suggests that they are the victims of Agent Orange, and other biochemicals used by the United States military. It was called Agent Orange because it was shipped to Vietnam in 55-gallon drums marked with an orange stripe. It was the principal defoliant used in what the Pentagon called Operation Ranch Hand. Since the enemy hid under the jungle canopy, one way to force him into the open was to make the jungles disappear. 19 million gallons of chemical defoliants were sprayed over the densely forested jungles of South Vietnam. 
it's just not one place that you can say, well, they dropped Agent Orange. No, they dropped Agent Orange all over the country. Bob Moore was assigned to the 101st Airborne Division when he arrived in Vietnam just before Christmas in 1965. He eventually served three combat tours in Vietnam. Well, it was all over Vietnam. You get off the coastal plains and you get over into the little hills that run north and south, they dropped it there. Now you get over in Triple Canopy, which is further west, they dropped it there. Okay, the next target is another guerrilla camp. Vietnamese soldiers and civilians alike were showered with Agent Orange. Then they lived, worked, and breathed amid the residue of an especially poisonous chemical called dioxin. An unavoidable byproduct of Agent Orange, dioxin was once described as the most toxic molecule ever synthesized by man. It infiltrated the country's water and soil, entered the food chain, and then accumulated in people's tissues. Then in 1969, researchers discovered that dioxin caused birth defects in laboratory animals. In December 1970, President Richard Nixon announced a halt to the use of Agent Orange in Vietnam. While scientists continue to study the link between dioxin and birth defects, one thing is known. According to a recent study published in a U.S. congressional report, dioxin levels in people who lived in sprayed areas of South Vietnam were ten times higher than in people living in the North. Now, more than a quarter century since the end of the war, another battle is being fought. This time, by the children. But they are not fighting alone. The children of Friendship Village have some rather heroic allies. Some of the same men who spent time fighting the war in Vietnam are returning to help rebuild it. One child at a time. These veterans come from Korea, Australia, and Vietnam. From Alaska, Missouri, and New York. They are drawn together to help the most needy of a nation they once left in ruins. These former enemies have started down the path to healing, and Friendship Village is the first step on their journey. Peace and reconciliation. We don't have to have war. We don't have to kill people. There are other ways. The killing is easy. It's the not killing that's difficult. Sewell Jones was a Marine infantryman fighting near the border of North Vietnam in 1968. That area saw some of the heaviest fighting of the war. 35 years later, Sewell Jones is back in Vietnam. I was startled. I was so amazed at how much had been done that one person could take the initiative and create something as beautiful as the Friendship Village. It changed my thoughts about what can be done. Friendship Village was born from the dream of an American combat veteran named George Mizo. In January of 1968, he became the sole survivor of an assault that killed his entire platoon. From that moment on, George's life was no longer about war, but about peace and reconciliation. In 1986, he returned to the country where he had battled two decades earlier. His visit to Vietnam provided the inspiration for Friendship Village, a place that would help heal the wounds of war between the United States and Vietnam. He was the first American vet to go back to Vietnam, which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome in itself in 1986. 
Now, George Mizo was one of my closest friends, the first Vietnam vet friend that I made after the war back in New Jersey 25 years ago. He was a, an activist and a, an extraordinary warrior for peace in America, in Europe, and uh, even in Nicaragua. The unique thing about George was that he was a highly decorated Vietnam combat vet, and he made connections with the veterans in the Vietnamese army, and both groups wanted to do something for the sake of friendship and peace as Vietnam was trying to get over uh, the disaster of decades of war. And George had a concept of forming this friendship village. With his wife, Rosie, and son, Michael, at his side, George Mizo would spend the next five years negotiating with the Vietnamese government while gathering support from veterans groups around the world. His dream was finally realized in October of 1998 with the official dedication of Friendship Village. This collection of buildings on the outskirts of Hanoi has become a home away from home for survivors of the war, both young and old. They are here to receive treatment, education, and support. The village cares for up to 70 children and 30 veterans at a time. Children may stay here for up to two years or until the age of 14. Veterans stay up to one year. They too receive treatment for a wide variety of illnesses. The Friendship Village has become almost entirely self-sufficient. The fish pond provides a renewable source of nutrition. The village grows its own fruit, vegetables, rice, and medicinal herbs. Chickens and pigs are raised on the village farm. Children are able to participate in raising the livestock planting and tending the garden, and preparing food. At the on-site clinic, children are treated for spina bifida, Down syndrome, cancers, and immunodeficiency-related illnesses. These diseases are among those commonly associated with Agent Orange exposure. This is a function of the immune system. The clinic has become an international center for research, drawing the attention of specialized doctors from around the world. Here in a primary classroom, a dozen children are learning. Their disabilities range from mild retardation to severe physical deformity but this doesn't prevent them from reaching their full potential. Most of these kids come from families unable to care for their special needs. It's amazing what happens. They can join together with other kids who have the same problems and they can live with them and, and have this, a normal schooling. Otherwise, they would not. They would stay away from school or they'd be, you know, very much uh, isolated. But here, it's like going to a special school. They have their own dormitories, they have a staff that takes care of them, and they'll go to classrooms and have regular mathematics and reading lessons, and they really advance rather than remain in the villages kind of isolated and unconnected. They become really well-schooled and involved with social uh, learning with other kids. And that's the beauty of Friendship Village. A wide range of activities are made available to all of the children, including athletics, singing, 
and vocational training. These kids are making silk flowers. Children improve their dexterity while learning a craft that will help them survive as young adults. More than 200 children have graduated from Friendship Village since 1998. Some continue on to higher education or advanced vocational training. All children graduate with skills that will improve their quality of life. The 21-member staff includes doctors, nurses, teachers, and physical therapists. The project is funded entirely by donations. Contributors include the United States, England, France, Germany, and Japan. It is this international cooperation that makes Friendship Village possible. People from Alaska did some fundraising, and we raised, a, I don't know, $3,000, $3,500 all told. We donated it, we sent it back, and they built a fish farm that feeds the entire village just with that $3,000. That one little event defined the whole village because it not only could have rice and vegetables, and, and, and now it had fish. It's fish in the diet all the time. Veterans from Korea came to the village. They've donated $10,000 to make improvements there. There are many Koreans who fought in Vietnam, and they're going to go back and try to get the Korean vets involved. So the kids see all of this going on, and it becomes a real community in itself. I want everybody in the world to know this is my hero right here. This young man has got more courage than most people ever think about having. He's been through so Something much, on, you know, he has, he has physical disabilities, he, he, he's very small for his age, he, he's eight years old, mm. but he's always smiling, he runs up to me and throws his arms around me, mm. that's why he's my hero, he's just uh, got a beautiful smile. <laughs> he understood that, didn't he? <laughs> The men and women who served in Vietnam risked their lives in a land far away from their own. They were there to help the Vietnamese people fight for their freedom. It was a fierce conflict with thousands of casualties from a dozen countries. The war has had a lasting effect on the combat soldiers who survived it. It was a painful experience that many Vietnam veterans live with every day. I think when I came home the last time and uh, got out of the military, that I'd put so much of that behind me that I never even thought about it. Never even thought about it until maybe it was brought up in a conversation or something. And then, not too much. Didn't say much about it then. I think the older I got and the older I get, the more of an impact that war had on me personally. And I can see it through my children and my wife and, and uh, people I know. I know this, that Vietnam War is what made me what I am today. Of course, I remember the day I got shot. I had been in country just two weeks when it happened, and we thought we were walking into a safe bill, and we walked straight into an ambush. And our whole company was wiped out almost, and I was about one of seven or eight people to make it out. Of course, you, know, you don't forget those kind of things. Although Vietnam is often remembered through the lens of war, it is in reality a country filled with captivating natural beauty and peaceful village life. Now this country is being invaded again. 
but this time it is a humanitarian invasion. These Vietnam veterans are rediscovering a place they once wanted to 